Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We really need to talk about Ethereum. So if you didn't hear, these spot Ethereum ETFs have been approved. Now, they're not going to be listed for a while, most likely. Some more things need to happen before they can start trading, but they are approved. And this is huge for a couple reasons. So obviously, this is big news for Ethereum. We know what happened with Bitcoin after its ETF got launched. And so the idea with Ethereum is that if it follows suit in any way, it might finally go and maybe even put in a new all-time high, if not going quite a bit further. So for Ethereum, this is obviously bullish, and the price has reflected that. On the day when it actually flipped and it seemed like it was much more likely that this approval was going to come, we were up 19% on the day. Massive candle up, and we've actually been, generally speaking, moving up since then, although not nearly as violently. But this is important for another reason as well that I wanted to talk about. One of the things that was really notable about this approval is it was nothing like the Bitcoin ETF approvals. Those were very well telegraphed ahead of times. People were pretty confident that the approval was going to come. And so the market was able to price that in for a while coming into that. What was different about this one was that going into this week, most people thought that these ETFs would be denied, that they wouldn't be approved. And it was really this extreme 180 that suddenly the SEC flipped around and approved them. And so one of the speculations as to why that might have happened was actually maybe it was pressure from on high, pressure from the White House, basically, on the SEC to change their tune. There's been a lot of talk about how possibly with Trump becoming more crypto friendly, the Biden administration realized that this being an election year, they can't afford maybe to alienate the crypto crowd, or the pro crypto vote. And so maybe they then tip the scales. And what really is important about that is that this might not just be bullish for Ethereum, but this actually could suggest that the U.S. government might be toning down or start to tone down its animosity and hostility towards the crypto industry, which frankly is not just good for Ethereum, but really crypto in general. And so that's the point that I think is maybe the undercurrent of this whole thing, that the headline story is all about Ethereum, and Ethereum is what I want to focus on in this video, but there might be a broader bullish undertone to this that maybe some of this real hostility we've been seeing is going to lessen going forward from here, if not actually change, and maybe it will get good faith regulation instead of this more bad faith regulation that we've gotten so far. Okay, so that's the context for everything. Now what I wanna do is talk about where is Ethereum right now and where could it go based on this news? Does it have a ton of room to work with to the upside or not? So let's go ahead and get into it. So one of the things I wanted to talk about for some context here was the ETH Bitcoin valuation. So this is something that people have been looking at for a while and really been lambasting ETH about, really deriding ETH, saying that it was just useless, that it was just continuing to bleed out against Bitcoin and basically arguing it was just going to keep going down, down, down. Some pretty prominent people here on YouTube, not going to name any names, some prominent people were saying that the ETH Bitcoin valuation was going to go way lower, that there really was no reason to be bullish on ETH, at least relative to Bitcoin, in the near term or anytime soon. But it does seem like this might be a turning of the tide, that we got all the way down to this general support level down over here, and we bounced off of it pretty aggressively, up 21% on the week so far. And so that might suggest is that at the very least, maybe we're going to see a move back towards the top of this range on the ETH Bitcoin valuation, which could mean a pretty explosive move from Ethereum if that were to happen, especially if Bitcoin were to at least somewhat follow suit with Ethereum if Ethereum continues to rally from here. So really, we're at a decent spot with this valuation where it would not be surprising to see a notable move back up. And really, resistance on this pair is you're kind of getting up to the higher end of the range to get a strong point of resistance that you kind of be identifying. So we'll have to wait and see, obviously, if broader market forces intervene and things get really bearish in traditional finance and stock market, things like that, that could change the, the story. But all that being equal, I think we're in a position where Ethereum could actually put in a pretty strong reversal against Bitcoin, which could be pretty extra beneficial for the ETH dollar pair. So that's one bit of context I wanted to give first here. Now I want to move into some of our models that we have here in the channel and what they're seeing with Ethereum and where it might go next. So what I want to talk about first is the trend confidence indicator for ETH. This is a model that cares about trend as the name implies. And what I've talked about in the past a lot and what I'll talk about here is 
looking at how the TCI is moving relative to price. When you see the TCI explode to the upside, price will often follow. And vice versa, when you see the TCI move down aggressively, you tend to get corrections or at the very least more protracted consolidation. And so we saw the same kind of things play out again, kind of TCI ripping to the upside here and price coming up along with it. Then the TCI moving down very strongly as we went into this correction, really forecasting that this was not a good time for Ethereum. But then we saw this very strong reversal on the TCI, even before this ETF news came out, we actually saw ETH building strength. And this is something we talked about before. I talked about this over on, on X. There was some strength that was coming into Ethereum and then the breakout happened and off to the races we went. Now, the good news here is that this is a very strong reading from the TCI that we're seeing here. And so even if we do end up getting up to a more local top type of situation, there's still gonna be more room that kind of goes through, more upside that ends up permeating through before you end up getting that correction kind of coming out of that really strong initial move. So even if this is a local top on the TCI, you actually might see price drift higher on ETH before maybe a correction would follow. But what I'd be looking for is a continuation actually on this move that as high as the TCI has already gotten, see it move even higher. And that would be more confirmation of strength and the possibility of this rally being able to continue. And the good news for the possibility of the rally continuing so if we go and look at risk, we're sitting at a decent position for Ethereum, both in the short term, which I'm going to talk about here now, and the long term, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is our upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. It is a risk model. So it cares about moves that play out over days to weeks. So shorter in its time horizon and high values mean high risk, low values mean low risk. And you see it does a fantastic job of identifying these high risk points for Ethereum, as well as these really low risk, good accumulation points for Ethereum. And something I've been talking about a lot with Ethereum is that though we had this massive spike up to above three, where I was saying at the time, ETH was probably going to hit a local top here, and indeed it did, we then cooled off massively from there, got all the way back down to the levels that we're at all the way here back in February 24, before that big rally that we had coming out of there. And so it seemed like we were primed and ready again, that if Ethereum wanted to, it had plenty of room to work with in the short term to the upside to go ahead and have a rally. And that's exactly what it's doing now. The ETF news is kind of the catalyst to set it off, but the conditions were absolutely there. So we have moved up on the short-term UDPI as you'd expect with this big move up, but we're still nowhere near these higher levels that we've seen in prior bull markets or even already in this cycle. So I think Ethereum does have more room to work with in short-term, again, broader market conditions allowing. And so in the short term, you know, we might be able to go up higher than maybe we'll have some kind of a local top, short term local top before our short term correction moving on higher. What excites me more with Ethereum is where it's a long term risk is right now. So this cares about moves that play out over months to multiple months. So more macro in its time horizon. And the reason why I'm very bullish here on the longer term risk for Ethereum is just look at where it is. We got down below negative two. So negative five is the bottom of the scale. Five is the top of the scale down to levels that we haven't seen since before, really this entire leg up that we've seen that started back here in October of 2023. And so we saw how much room Ethereum was able to go, how much rally it was able to have off of that level last time. If we are able to see a bullish continuation off of this very bullish news with the speculation again, because we actually aren't seeing the ETF trading. So any possibility of it being a disappointing launch or anything like that can't really affect the price. It's all speculation now. There's a very decent possibility, I think, the market might work itself into a frenzy, and we could have a decent rally off of these risk levels, maybe get back up to these higher risk levels that we've seen in the past, which could correspond to much higher ETH prices. And I would not be surprised to see new all-time highs and above in that kind of situation. So obviously, none of this is financial advice. You should make your own opinions. But that's one of the things that I'm looking at here that makes me quite excited. And another thing that I think is good news for Ethereum right here is what its forecast model is saying. So this is our forecast model for Ethereum. If, if you're not familiar, it's basically giving you the probability that the price of ETH will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So you can see in bear markets like through here, really low probabilities of upside in six months and indeed nailing that. But then as you go into bull markets, the opposite, getting really bullish, high probability of upside in six months and indeed getting that right before going into the next bear market. 
So in this cycle, this model did a fantastic job of flipping bullish at the right time, telling us that we were in a bull market for Ethereum. And now it has dipped down a little bit with this move, but it's still pretty high. It's still in clear bull market territory, like what we saw over here. Currently at just above 80%, 82% chance that the price of ETH will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So this is a good sign for Ethereum. It suggests to me that the bull market is very much still intact. And of course, with this very bullish catalyst, it seems like that just might be more fuel for the fire. Now, 82% is not 100%, but it's a heck of a lot better than 11%. So I will take that any day of the week. So when I'm looking at across these data, it all is pointing in a pretty bullish direction. In the short term, there's a lot of signs of strength and more room that Ethereum could have to work with to the upside. And longer term, it's looking like it's in a nice position, that this correction was really what the doctor had ordered to let things reset or let risk reset so that we can then go and continue on the bull market potentially. So to wrap us up, I did want to talk quickly about some on-chain data that I think is also going to be worth watching. So the first thing I want to talk about was realized price for Ethereum, starting off with the shorter term realized price. So that's what this blue line is here. This is basically the realized price of Ethereum for people who have been holding Ethereum for 180 days or less. So right around that cutoff that people tend to use for short-term holders. So realized price is basically the cost basis for that group. It's basically the average price that they paid for Ethereum as a group. And the reason why paying attention to this can be useful is that in bull markets, you tend to see it act as support. So for example, in this bull market here, the one in 2017 going into 2018, you can see it bounce off of the short-term holder cost basis multiple times in this bull market before finally breaking it, which signaled the end of that bull run. Same thing here, holding a support multiple times for ultimately really breaking below into the bear market. And then so far this cycle, we did have one more extended period of breaking below it. But again, just more recently, we held it as support before this next big leg up. So I think this is gonna be an important line in the sand to keep an eye on with Ethereum, that as it potentially rallies out further from here, where is this cost basis? And then is there gonna be a point where it clearly breaks down below it? That might be a sign for concern. Now, another thing that's just going to be important to watch, in my opinion, also is the overall aggregate realized price. So this is across the entire market. So regardless of when people bought their Ethereum, what is the average cost basis? What is the average price at which they bought Ethereum? And the reason why I think keeping an eye on this is it can tell us when are the longer term holders selling? When you see this total realized price really move up aggressively that suggests that longer term holders are actually selling. And that's what allows the cost basis to rise. So when people who are, had bought Ethereum down at these really low levels are selling, now suddenly the average cost basis will jump up almost by necessity because prices are higher. So we haven't really seen that happen yet. It's been pretty flat. But if we get to a point where that starts rising aggressively, there might be a suggestion that people who had bought at these lower levels or even in prior cycles are selling, which really is making that average cost basis move up which could be more concerning. So we have all these data at our website, partydigital.io. And I think that's something that's a little bit unique about our site relative to a lot of others is not only do we have on-chain data for Bitcoin and for Ethereum, like you're seeing here, we also have it for a number of altcoins, which I think really sets it apart to say nothing of our proprietary models like I've been talking about already. So if you wanna see these for yourself, you can go over to our site, partydigital.io, link in the description. So the final piece of on-chain data I wanted to talk about was the percent of total supply in profit for Ethereum. Because I think it's interesting to keep an eye on this metric. So this is, as the name suggests, just what percentage of people who hold Ethereum are in profit right now. And what you'll see is that in bull markets, you'll get to these points where most people, or basically all people, are in profit. As you'd expect, as you're going up and breaking new all-time highs, setting new all-time highs, people should, by and large, all be in profit. But then when you go into bear markets, of course, that's when you get to these points where a lot of people are in loss, are not in profit. So more recently, we did see this very much bull market type behavior from Ethereum happen, where we got to this point where 96% of Ethereum holders were in profit. We then fell off in this correction, we've jumped back up there again. And this looks an awful lot like what we've seen in prior bull markets. As you're starting to make those runs up to new all-time highs, You'll get to these really high levels, you'll have corrections off of them, but then you'll get back up to them. So this still looks very much like bull market behavior 
in my opinion, based on this metric. Certainly, this is not early bull market behavior. You know, that's when you're down at these lower levels and you kind of feed into that. So clearly, this is more of a mid-cycle type behavior, not early cycle. But there can be plenty of more room to work with to the upside, even when you see this start happening. And we've already seen that with Ethereum in the past. I mean, look at the first time we hit it here back in March of 2017. Ether was trading for $15. It then rallied all the way up to $1,200 dollars over twelve hundred dollars so massive amount of upside that still remain for ethereum even after that first print so we had that first print here there still could be a good amount of room to work with not i'm not saying that we're gonna have as much as this cycle obviously i think that's very unlikely but still a good amount of room to work with so that's where i think the on-chain data looks good our models look good and the broader narratives look good now it's important to note that this doesn't mean that ethereum is just going to necessarily blast off to the moon immediately it could well, who knows? There could be a whole bunch of different factors that people could sell the news a little bit. There could be some chopping around before we do that. But personally, I'm looking at this as a chance to not get it twisted. That this is a sign that not just for Ethereum is the regulatory picture getting better, but for crypto in general, the hostility from the US government might be lessening for political reasons with the election coming up which might mean that we're entering into a sweet spot potentially for the crypto markets generally that could be a lot more favorable and allow for new entrants to get into the market a lot more easily. So Ethereum, I think very clearly stands a benefit, but really the broader market may as well. So obviously none of that's financial advice. You should make of it as you will. But I think this is a really important moment for crypto potentially. I think this is one that very possibly could be one that we look back to in years to come as a really a turning point, especially from that regulatory perspective, which might really be something that feeds into higher prices across the board. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates for our models and more over there. And go to our website, PlurityDigital.io to see live data for our models and more.